Hey guys, it's me, Arthur, and you're watching How to Draw Creepy Creatures. Now, uh, I am going to talk to you today about a kind of interesting, if all but a little bit confusing, uh, creature called the Water Horse. Now, what makes this interesting is that the term is a little bit confusing, because when talking about the Water Horse in the context of mythology or general folklore, the term is often used to describe either a Kelpie, you know, like a think Harry Potter, for instance, or the hippocampus from Greek mythology, which is basically a merhorse. However, when talking about the creature in a more cryptozoological sense, the term is often used to describe an animal, a marriage, an alleged marine mammal that hasn't been discovered by science, which bears some equine features, which is kind of interesting. Now, the main sightings of this animal have been in Loch Ness. That's where it became most popular. However, there's also been sightings in the Americas, in other parts of uh, Eastern and Western Europe, and also uh, there was a famous photo taken in the late 2010s by uh, tourists in the Greek islands, which appears to show a similar creature. Now, interestingly, the few scientists that have played with the notion of this animal possibly existing have dismissed the idea that the water horse is a species of equine that evolved to, become, to adapt to the water, simply because if horses took on an aquatic form, there would be more evidence in the fossil records to suggest something like that. That's a major evolutionary event. It's more likely that if such an animal exists, it would be something along the lines of a seal or a dugong or manatee which are distant, uh, manatees are distantly related to horses, just they share a common ancestor way, way, way long ago. So it's not completely unreasonable to assume that, an, that a manatee could take on vaguely horse-like features. So it's a pretty interesting subject, and I suggest that you look into it more yourself, but today I'm going to show you how to draw my own interpretation based on the eyewitness sightings, and also just a little bit of logic, like like a horse living underwater that has hooves and a scaly tail that just doesn't make a lot of sense biologically. So it's kind of interesting kind of from a speculative zoology point to kind of come up with something that's in between the legends, the eyewitness descriptions, and just like basic logic of what this animal would have to look like to survive. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's start with just the basic skeletal shape. Kind of start with the front like you're drawing a horse, but then kind of, kind of have it tapered back towards the tail end, kind of like a dolphin almost. Now there's a little bit of contention over whether or not it has legs and how many legs it has. I'm going to give it four legs, the reason being that there's been a lot of sightings on land, kind of suggesting that it's semi-terrestrial, that it crosses from one body of water to another by making short trips on land, kind of like an author, so I'm going to give it four very short legs. I'm not going to make them too big because you would, that would kind of suggest that there would be some drag while it's swimming. I'm going to give it a very sort of camel-shaped head with very small external ears, kind of like a sea lion almost. Alright, kind of give it a mane like a horse, but a little bit short. 
the uh, descriptions usually say that the mane looks like seaweed, almost suggesting that there's uh, plant life growing in it. Hypothetically speaking, this could be a form of camouflage, kind of uh, like how a sloth has uh, local foliage and moss growing in its hair that ate it in camouflage. Now let's fill in some of the finer details and line work with a fine tip pen. Now for the first layer of color with the Copic markers, I'm going to be using kind of like a, a mustardy yellow. Kind of imagine that if this animal lives near the seashore, then it probably would uh, have colors that kind of help it blend in with rocks and sand. Now for the second layer, I'm going to be doing a much sort of like a darker color on top. Leave a light colored underbelly because that's what you often see in animals, especially marine animals. They tend to be lighter on the bottom and darker on top, which helps them blend in because then predators, when they see them from underneath, it kind of, they kind of blend in with the light coming through the water. Now we're going to do some yellows and greens in the main to represent the moss and the seaweed that's clinging to it, growing to it, adding to camouflage. Yeah, add a, pick a few different colors of uh, olive and mustard yellow to kind of show the difference in the light when, when it's shining off of the hair.
Now I'm going to use a darker shade of brown to kind of do like a dappled pattern across its body, kind of like what you see in seals. The purpose of this is to break up their image in the water, kind of so that the light bounces off of them and it's confusing when predators and prey see them and it kind of makes them blend in with their surroundings. Now I'm going to use a gray pen. I'm going to use a couple different shades of gray to represent the shadows. Yeah, use some lighter grays in some areas. Maybe go back over it with a fine tip pen to kind of fill in some details that might have been lost. just drawn a water horse. Alright, like, share, and subscribe, you guys. Uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions or comments about the show, just leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you or suggestions for future topics. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under uh, Cthulhu is my homeboy with underscores instead of spaces. And uh, my email address, my link to my Patreon page in the description. And anybody who finished a lesson on the show and would like to show off your artwork, you send it to me. As long as you give me your permission, I'll show off the show with your name so everybody knows that you did it. Thanks so much for watching, you guys, and goodbye.